welcome to another video in which I want to talk about 5 things that I wish I know when I started with Final Fantasy XIV. That could possibly have made the whole experience much better in improving quality of life overall. First of all, my go-to graphics settings, which create a perfect balance between quality and performance that you can achieve by choosing the maximum preset and then checking the boxes for both disable rendering of objects when not visible, as well as using low detail models on distant objects. Then, according to personal preference, put real-time reflections on off and transparent lighting quality on normal. And now to the big deal on this aspect, ambient occlusion. Make sure to put this to HBO plus standard and if you want to save a big load of performance, put it to off. And compensate for the lack of visual depth with G-Shade or similar tools, but more to that later. With these settings, you preserve at least 30% performance while maintaining an overall identical look. And only if you check out the details, you will notice a difference. Also, if you want to let your character pop out to its environment a bit more, visit the Display Settings tab and move to the Character Lighting Scaler, which can enhance the lighting brightness on yourself and other players, to not lose track of them. Next up, there are a couple of UI and system changes that can improve your interaction with other players and content a bit easier. So let me cover my most important things you should set up. First, go to System Configuration and click on the three little dots on the left side, which are called Other Settings. Here it is insanely useful, especially if you have an older CPU, to reduce the amount of players and objects visible when you're getting closer to them. I would recommend either normal or low, but of course if you want to see all the crazy Limsa Luminsa weirdos as a whole, stick with maximum or high. But for any setting below that, your power bill and CPU will thank you later. For targeting, there's only one change that might make tap targeting a bit easier to manage, especially in raids with ads or in PvP. So, open up Character Configurations, go to Control Settings and choose the Target tab, in which you want to change Type 1 Ignore Depth to Type 2 Cone. That will mostly be the overall better option when it comes to targeting. And while being in this menu already, go two tabs further to Character and make sure to check the box Show Limited for party members and other spell effects to be reduced to the essentials. Yes, it is cool to have all battle effects visible, but might get fatiguing very quickly while blinding your sight and reducing your battle awareness significantly. The limited option will stick to things you need to see, like area of effect heals from your healers or stuff alike, which is all you need to know about. Last but not least, on the general tab, also in control settings, I highly recommend to check the box of skipping playback of previously viewed scenario cutscenes and transportation cutscenes, so that whenever you enter a dungeon, the intro cutscene is not repeated for a thousand times and you have to manually skip it or watch it. Yes, you're still being forced to watch the main scenario duty roulette cutscenes, but they reduce the length of this scenario significantly, so it is nowhere close to the horror of old days. By the way, what are those cool hotbars with which you can change jobs on the fly while disappearing afterwards? Good that you ask. These are called collapsing hotbars and have originated from an idea my good friend Macy brought to me to reduce button and UI bloat on my interface by attaching all my jobs, crafters and many other things to useful hotbars that you can collapse on purpose or hiding them automatically by certain time windows. As this is totally legal, you just have to come around with a bunch of macros and a very clever system utilizing your base classes that upon becoming the connected job are not needed anymore. And the best thing, it is totally allowed and as long as you have unlocked one or two jobs, it can be set up by each and every one. Just the process of doing so is a bit complicated, so I highly advise you to check out my video about that topic, which you can find in the description. Alright, while the collapsing hotbar system is indeed a valid in-game option to tweak your UI, there are a couple of third-party tools as well. But unfortunately, you have to learn about them by yourself, as it is not allowed for me to promote any of these tools. However, there is one that I truly wish I had known when I first started the game and which is generally accepted by Square Enix and its moderation team and chances are next to zero to get banned for using it. Yes, I'm talking about G-Shade. Not only that it can enhance the overall graphical appearance of Final Fantasy XIV, but it also is very useful to make screenshots or highlight certain things for players with disabilities. All of this being disconnected from battle and UI helpers, so that we're not talking about unfair advantages or similar ideas. It is simply an enhancement tool like the one Nvidia or AMD provide natively through their GPU software, but a bit more optimized for Final Fantasy XIV and its shader behavior. Even Square Enix uses these for promotion, so worry not when you're going to install this for yourself. And of course, you can find my comprehensive guide about G-Shade in the description. But maybe you just want my personal G-Shade presets, which you can find in our Discord server G-Shade section. 
Okay, last but not least. This is not strictly a tip, but a mindset some players have misconceptions about. Final Fantasy XIV's PvP is bullshit! Not anymore, my friend. Since 6.1, they introduced a whole revamp of all jobs as well as the crystalline content. And this, while not being perfect, finally made PvP a very cool side activity in this game. Not only from a hardcore fan perspective, but also when compared to other MMOs out there. Yes, rewards, the MMR system, queuing up with friends and the longevity of content are aspects that they need to work on. But overall it is a very solid foundation, providing a lot of fun in competitive engagement and you can already start the action level 30, without any gear requirements. Legacy players just had the Feast or Frontlines and all of these PvP versions weren't anywhere close to the Crystalline Conflict and I'm glad they took the risks and spent the effort to push the whole PvP section out of the grave. So if you care about PvP in an MMO, Final Fantasy XIV is finally offering it. Of course, there are millions of tips and things you could miss when first playing the game. So if any one of you has more ideas and ways of improving a player's overall quality of life, post your thoughts in the comments section and help newcomers as best as possible. Until next time, have a great journey, safe travels and keep loving Final Fantasy. <laughs>